In the name of the living and loving God, who is Creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit. I was really touched last Thursday by the coverage of the 75th anniversary of D-Day. Certainly I've read about it and heard about it, but I don't know. It just meant something fresh and brand new to me last Thursday. Um, maybe it was the amount of coverage it had. Uh, maybe it was some of the stories that were told, like, um, like those boys of Bedford from Bedford, Virginia, out of 35 young men who went and served and were there for that day, 19 of them died. Stories like that. That was probably one of the most significant events um, close to my lifetime that I can think of in the history of the world. And it's something worth reflecting on, remembering, and celebrating, and being grateful for. The president, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, who, by the way, was an Episcopalian, a very active member of St. James Episcopal Church in Hyde Park, New York, seemed to really capture the the seriousness of that and the hope of that and the challenge of that event um, in his prayer, which he sent to those soldiers and shared with the public as well. I'm going to read just a couple of sentences. Almighty God, our sons, pride of our nation, this day have set upon a mighty endeavor, a struggle to preserve our republic, our religion, and our civilization, and to set free a suffering humanity. Lead them straight and true. Give strength to their arms, stoutness to their hearts, and steadfastness in their faith. <clears throat> and as he went on in the prayer, he acknowledged the fact that some would die. And also was referred to the fact that not only were those young men a part of this event, but thousands of men and women who went into intelligence work, preparation work, building of those airplanes. Um, it, was, it, was a, it was a huge event. And I would say that um, that D-Day mission seven years ago without a doubt, had strong clarity of purpose. I mean, it was a military event. It was a mission. They knew what they were doing. They knew how to do it. They knew what the risks were. It had a strong clarity. This is what we're going to do, folks. Get on board. I would also say that um, that event had a known and necessary sacrifice. Everybody knew that some of those soldiers were going to die. And some of the stories, I watched a CBS video about it, but of people, family members who said goodbye, said they would not say goodbye to their family members who were going off because they didn't want to think that they might not come home. Everybody knew that there was a sacrifice, and they were willing to make that sacrifice. So that's a little piece of history, but also something that lives in our hearts. But what about us? There's that event, but what about, what about us now as Christians in this worship space right now? How clear are we about our purpose, our purpose of life? That's a good question. Actually, it's a good prayer question. Actually, it's a question that we could ask ourselves every day and see how God would inform us. But it's a question of faith. I mean, what, what rock are we standing on? As Christians, how clear is our purpose of life? <clears throat> 
Well, maybe some of us might come up with something that sounds quite familiar and is certainly essential. Well, our purpose is to love God and love our neighbors as ourselves. That's scriptural in several places. Um, but what about the necessary cost? If that's our purpose of life, then what is the necessary cost in our lives to move towards that purpose? Well, some of us might say to turn away from our pride and self-sufficiency. Well, that's another challenge. But that might be it. That might be the thing that we have to let go of in order to live into that purpose of loving God and neighbor as ourselves. At least that's what these scriptures are about, all three of them. That's what this day is about. In that Genesis 11 story, which is really quite fascinating, it's all about mortals who are getting it together and really on a roll they can see that they can do almost anything. They can communicate with each other. They can build a high tower to the heavens. And they think, so why do we need God? Look what we're doing. We can make it. We can make it on our own. But God steps in and says, wait a minute. You can do that if you want to, but I really want you to be in relationship with me. I really want you to honor the fact that you depend on me. You depend, you mortals, depend on God and depend on others. And I really think, God says in, his, in, his, in this story, that a strong, a strong and broad sense of diversity is important in God's creation. That's a part of God's creation, both in nature, flora, fauna, and among humans. So God was saying, no, you can't make it on your own. I'm glad God won out. In the gospel reading, which really comes histor in a histor historical sequence next, um, John is, you've heard these words before. <laughs> this is weird. The past three Sundays have been sort of a sequential uh, rendering of this farewell discourse, and there's been some overlap. But, but John's quoting Jesus, saying, But the advocate of the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I've said to you. So you see, it's a similar message. In other words, God is saying to those people, God is saying to those people, there's more for you to learn, and, and God, will, God will provide that for you. You just have to listen to the Holy Spirit, to Jesus, to God. And in the third reading, which sequentially is third, the story about the day of Pentecost, Remember, as, as was told in the story, remember the day of Pentecost was really a, a command performance for all, all Jews in that area that have spread out throughout the Mediterranean in that part, of, that part of the East. And yeah, they were from different countries with different languages. And they were there for that holy day. And as you heard, the Holy Spirit appeared and empowered the Holy Spirit empowered the apostles to speak in the language of the others, not one language, but all the different languages so that everybody there could hear the message of Jesus Christ. So the message here, the story here, the, is, is again, disciples, apostles, those gathered in that upper room, you've been so faithful and you need more, we realize that. You need more, you will receive the Holy Spirit so that you can carry out your mission to the entire world. Again, it's, what we hear is, you can't do it on your own. We can't do it on our own. The beautiful part of this, this whole approach is this, that God is really saying there exists in creation and in our faith, 
a diversity within a unity. Yes, there's one God, but there are a whole lot of different ways that we know that God and a whole lot of different types of people that worship that God. Another sort of interesting fact for the past three weeks is over the past three weeks, a book that we're reading, An Altar in the World by Barbara Brown Taylor, has coincided in some ways with the lectionary readings because the chapter that the group is reading, reflecting on today, and all of you invited, you've got to go to coffee hour first, but after coffee hour, you can go to the reception room for a discussion of the chapter seven, and, and it's about living a purposeful life. There's that word again, purpose. And so here's, here's a fascinating quote from that chapter. Then one night when my whole heart was open to hearing from God, that's, that's, every word here is important. Then one night when my whole heart was open to hearing from God, what I was supposed to do with my life. God said, anything that pleases you, I said, what? A resort, a resorting, resorting to words again. What kind of answer is that? Do anything that pleases you, the voice in my head said again, and belong to me. An important last three words. In other words, our purpose in life, again, is up to each one of us to determine this, but maybe, maybe this is another purpose of life that some of us would agree to. Maybe it is, listen deeply to God and follow our heart. And here's how that would work. If we listen, if we really listen deeply to God, we're not going to do something that doesn't make sense and we're not going to do something that is immoral, and we're not going to do something that is hurtful, and we are going to do something that strengthens the way we feel about God and ourselves. And that might just be our purpose of life. Amen.